Good morning, True Crime friends. How y'all doing? Today is, what's today? Monday, May the 6th. Did you celebrate Cinco de Mayo yesterday? Did you have some Cinco in your de Mayo? Oh, we had quesadillas. It was delicious. Anyway, look. Uh, Chad Daybell, the state of Idaho, Iowa versus Chad Daybell, trial day 16. Honey, you know how the other day we had the parade of nosy neighbors? Trial day 16 saw the parade of law enforcement agents, mostly FBI guys. Okay, but first, 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 they had the local police who had some body cam footage. Oh, you know I love body cam. Oh, if you remember, you heard my story about me making my body cam um, debut. I was ready, honey. As a true crime fan, when it comes to body cam, you know exactly what to do. And I knew exactly what to do. But anyway, Lori Vallow, I get the feeling she knew exactly what to do too because she has been on body cam a couple of times, lying the whole time. So the police were like, knock, knock, knock. Hey, Lori girl, how you doing? How you doing? And she's like, hi, it's hot. Come on in. And they were like, hi, um, where's the kids? And she was just like, right, 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 right. See, um... Let, 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 let me explain to you. And then a tsunami of lies spring forth from her mouth. Oh, this child can lie professionally. She just lied and lied and lied. She's like, see, what happened was um, my son is with my friend down in Arizona. Her name is Melanie. They went to see Frozen too. Don't you love Frozen, Elsa? And they were like, focus, half a focus. And she was like, okay, so see what had happened was, um, it's a long story. We've had a bear, very bad year. My brother is trying to kill me. And the cops were like, I'm up. I'm sorry, what's mm -hmm. My brother, he lives in Kansas. He's trying to kill me. P.S. That same brother now has a podcast. Turns out he was not trying to kill her. But she was like, wait, can you say the K word on here on the tubes of you? My brother was trying to unfortunately unalive me. And then my other brother, Alex, he is here to protect me. And they were like, right, so um, your brother, Alex, we met him when we stopped to buy before. And he was here with some other guy. Who was that other guy? Now, listen, the police knew that the guy that was with Alex when they stopped by the house the first time, that was Chad Daybell. And they knew that Chad Daybell was Lori's husband. Here come Lori with her lies. Um, oh, who, I don't I don't know who would have been. Oh, that guy, Chad. That's just my brother's friend. Mm, okay. Uh, okay. You mean your husband? Your brother's friend. Okay, right. And they were like, wait, Daybell, Daybell. Wait, don't we know him? She's like, mm -hmm. he's a famous author. Mayama. Okay, so we're just going to put that in the lie category. He's a famous. Okay, okay. Like, Doesn't he have a daughter? Didn't his wife pass away? She's like, I don't, he has lots of kids. I don't know. His, his wife is unfortunately, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about that lying sack of sugar anyway she was just like see what happened was my um my nephew he's a narcotics enthusiast and he had a baby with a narcotics enthusiast ma'am the police ain't ask all your personal family business they just want to know where jj is she's like mm -hmm. and so the baby had a lot of special needs and i personally was a hero and i adopted that baby and then Kay woodcock the baby's natural grandmother um she's just after me because i'm wonderful and delightful and i have like blonde hair is anybody really naturally blonde Does is blonde hair, occur, does it, blonde hair occur naturally in nature? I'm just asking for myself. Anyway, I mean, I'm sure it does, but not as often as you see it. So anyway, she was just like, so um, everyone hates me because I'm delightful. And um, so what happened was my husband passed away. Ma'am, do, do you mean you murdered him? Is that is is that how you saying that now? Like, um, my brother, my protector, unfortunately unalived him. And as soon as we put bullets in him, he had a heart attack, meaning his heart stopped working. What? Okay, okay, sure. So she told this whole bunch of lies. And the cops were like, right, 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 right. And then she was like, and then there was some life insurance. And there was life insurance and life insurance. And I don't have any money because Kay Woodcock took the life insurance. And do you know, I am the perfect mom. And there was life insurance and life insurance and money, money, money. Life insurance, life insurance, life insurance. Ma'am, ma'am, focus. We are here to talk about JJ. We're not here to talk about Chad Daybell. We're not here to talk about your myriad of lies. We're not here to talk about life insurance or JJ's biological parents. Ma'am, where is JJ? She's like, right, 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 right. Frozen. You can ask Melanie Gipp because I believe they are at Frozen. And I'm so super sorry um, that my family is trying to kill me for life insurance. But everyone is trying to kill me for the life insurance. And they had life insurance on my life. And so um, I canceled the life insurance. So they cannot unfortunately unalive me because life insurance, ma'am. 
Um, I think, you know how sometimes they say people like leak out their emotions. She didn't leak. She just lied. She just opened her mouth and was just like, I care about life insurance. I'm telling you right now, everything that I care about and what I care about is life insurance. And they're like, okay, thanks so much for being so nice. Um, we're going to go outside. Now, listen, when you're on body cam, apparently there's like a code among the local law enforcement. And they said, I'm not sure if they said not, not or knock, knock, I, unclear. But that was cold for like, turn off your camera so we can talk about this heifer. But what I really want to know is what they say when them cameras was off. And the police officer was like, um, we turned the cameras off so we could talk about, so we could express our opinions. <laughs> I need to know your opinion. That's the body cam footage I want to know. His name was like, can you see this line sack of sugar? You, you see this happen out here? All, all she could talk about was life insurance. And she said that child was, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. She done done something. Listen, we're going to leave right now. We're going to go get a search warrant because we know, mm, -mm this heifer, she's a liar. And so um, they were like, oh, wait, Lori, one more thing. Can you have your friend Melanie just call us? Just give us a little ring-a-ding-ding. And then um, we can sort this all out. She's like, of course, because I'm naturally blind in every life insurance. Life insurance, life insurance. Everyone's trying to unalive me for life insurance. Okay, okay. So then they went and got a search warrant and they came back the very next day. The whole place was cleaned out. Everything was gone. Look. Lori was so fast leaving. She packed up all her stuff, but she left some things behind. Oh, she left behind a computer. She left behind some paperwork. And then her little niece, Melanie, Melanie Boudreaux, who lived next door. Well, Melanie was just away on a Thanksgiving trip. Melanie was like, wait, I did not get the word that we were supposed to vacate the premises. I left all my incriminating information out. Melanie, B Melanie Boudreaux, who lived next door, she had a big binder filled with credit cards in her ex-husband's name and his driver's license. Ma'am, okay, uh, okay, okay. She's like, in case I need to do a little shopping. And I have this entire book of his credit cards in his name. That's not suspicious at all. And so they were like, okay. So then um, the uh, defense attorney got up and was like, right, 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 right. Uh, did you do all this investigation of Melanie Gibbs? And they were like, no, we did not because we were looking at Lori. Like, well, what about Melanie? And what about her boyfriend, David Warwick? Maybe Melanie Gibbs, unfortunately, unalive JJ. And so then uh, John Pryor, the defense attorney, sat down and the prosecution was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, before you go, one more quick question. Was um, Melanie Gibbs' children found, unfortunately, unalive in Chad's yard? <laughs> the cops was like, nope. It's like, okay, we rest our case. John Pryor, please have all the seats. Next up was a cell phone guy. And I was like, okay, I don't geofencing cell phones they looked and looked and looked fine 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 they found alex's cell phone in the area and then they were like um hey google people you know down at the office not like when you say hey google in that thing in your house answers hey google can you get some information about all these people in all this area and google was like girl no we busy we google people's googling all the time it's real human beings behind that answering questions we don't have time to look for all them people and so um finally google was i mean the cops was trying to get somebody on the phone the people at google was finally like hello i'm sitting here trying to answer you know how many legs does a centipede actually have what you see me trying to answer the google questions and so they were like right uh we need all the information from 12 people and google was like nah it, it's too many people can you narrow it down and call me back later thanks my click Honest to goodness, I, it never occurred to me that you could reach Google by calling like, what, 1-800-GOOGLE? If you Google something and it doesn't come up, are there actual humans that you could call who going to answer your questions? I have questions. I have, Can I Google that? And is it a person on the other end just answering and putting in all my information? I kind of need to know right now. But I have learned from this trial that if you call them, they're not going to answer. Even the police can't get an answer. Child, just a nosy lady from New Jersey, you know I can't get an answer. So I'm just going to have to Google who's actually answered the Google questions. That's a really good question. Anyway, and so they did all, um, the cell phone guys came in and they looked around and they were like, okay, Alex Cox was in this local area or whatever. And during some portion, they found um, a computer. Maybe that was during the apartment search. Anyway, they found a computer with uh, Chad Daybell's um, pictures on it. Like all of his pictures from his whole life, from when he was courting Tammy, from when he first met Tammy, from all the births, all the 65,000 children hang on. You know, I don't talk my throat dry. They found pictures throughout all of Chad's life. And I was like, oh, that's nice. He kept all the, all the pictures. Here's the thing, though. Um, Chad deleted 
all of his pictures. And to me, that means he deleted his whole life. From the day he met Tammy, 28, 30 years ago, all the way up until he uh, met Lori, all of those pictures were gone. Deleted, finished, done. And what was in their place was the cringiest wedding pictures you've ever seen in your life. I mean, cr 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 cringe, cringe, cringe. Like, Chad is playing the ukulele. Chad is wearing white clothes. Lori is on the beach in a white dress, and she's looking at him longingly. What does she see in him? For the life of me, Lori, yes, I know you were insane, but you were the kind of crazy, you know, her Her kitty was feral. Let, 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 can we just talk about it? Her kitty was super, super feral. She was doing all the things. She did things to him he didn't even know existed. You know, she probably let him do it in a no-no place. I mean, they was doing every single thing. I can see the appeal for him. I can see him out here on a lot of people. Why was she doing all this stuff to get with this dude? I don't. Anyway, she's just like, marshmallowy is totally my type, and he's got $80,000 worth of life insurance coming. Ma'am, uh, Charles, your last husband, he made serious money. How long did you think Charles was going to keep you in, co I mean, Chad was going to keep you in comfort and style on, on only $80,000 in life insurance money? Chad, you can spend that up by next week. We saw your Amazon bill. Anyway, so Chad deleted all the pictures of his old family and put all these cringy pictures of him playing the ukulele. You know, ukulele players are a little bit, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to slander all the ukulele players, just him in particular, but they look crazy. Some of the pictures were cute. Now him holding her on the beach with her leg kicked out or whatever. Child, she was living deep, deep, deep in her fantasy life. But if he was going to be heavenly father, which ill, and she was going to be heavenly mother in this scenario. Okay. Um, how y'all, how do you account for Yes, we're unaliving people, but we're going to rule the world. So it's all okay. It's, it's, it's not okay. So just for you there at home, if you're thinking of unaliving people so you can rule the world, that that's not going to go good for you. I just, I'm, I'm just here to tell you right now, I am, a, I'm a vow. I am a voice of warning. That's not going to go good for you. Also, as an aside, do you think Chad thinks he's going to get away with this? Like from the bottom of my heart, I cannot figure out how this man thinks he's going to get away with it. Some trials you go into and you're like, okay, I can see where maybe he thinks maybe, even if the evidence is faulty or maybe not altogether, whatever the defense is not that great. Maybe the defendant is like, I could probably get away with this. Does Chad think that like the, the tribulation are going to come? While he's there on trial, every time somebody slams the door hard, he's like, is that the earthquake that begins everything? What does this man think for the life of me? I cannot figure it out. But look, lastly, the body recovery people came in. Now, listen, this, this is the FBI. The FBI is like, these dudes are super, super into digging up dead bodies. I was just like, okay, um, I appreciate a person who likes their job. I like my job. I'm just a little bit freaked out by a dude who's super in to unearthing corpses. So this FBI agent gets on the stand and he was like, hi, my name is whatever his name is, child, you know, I don't remember. Anyway, he was just like, mm -hmm, I became an FBI agent, but then you had to go to like special school to gather evidence. And they were like, okay, so you went to evidence gathering school. He's like, mm -hmm. and then I went to dig up a dead body school. And they were like, okay, can you explain to us what that was? And he was like, yes, happily. So what you do is um, after you pass all these other tests, then they send you to a special school and you get to go um, dead body recovery and we are the recovery guys and it's awesome and I was like sir you, you you're, you're you're a little bit a little bit too excited about digging up that well ex explain to us your education he's like okay so when you go to school in Tennessee apparently they got a bunch of dead bodies buried over there in Tennessee uh FBI are y'all using like chicken corpses or like are, are, are they using actual people to practice with because he's like mm-hmm they bury, the, bury these four different dead bodies and then you have to dig them up and sift through it and then find out everything. And I was like the top of my class. I was A number one. Sir, sir, a little less excitement, a little bit less excitement. So he was like, okay, so we got the map and then we planned it out and we knew that there was like a pet cemetery. So we figured out where the pet cemetery was and then we took all the cell phone data and we're like, okay, the cell phone from Alex Cox, he was in this spot right here. So that might be where the bodies are. And he, then he said, and I quote, <clears throat> That little amphibian is coming back to my throat. He said, and I quote, we got to dig up the body, sir. 
you have to dig up the body. It's not that you get to dig up. Well, he said we got to, we, um, we get to dig. We went over there, we get to dig. I was like, sir, wrong. I'm gonna need you to bring it down a notch or 12. It's not that we get to dig, but yeah, you you do get to dig. And he's like, okay. So first, it was like, we took pictures, right? We took the pictures. He was so excited about this digging. He's like, and it was like leaves and stuff. So we took pictures of the leaves and then we gently removed some of the leaves. And then we took another picture and then we took a Pharaoh scan so you can see. And then we took another kind of scan. We took a far scan and a near scan. And then we took like the first group of dirt. We took it away and then we were shaking it like my you know, like when you're panning for gold, only we were panning for dead bodies. Sir, calm down. So anyway, I feel like that man feels about dead bodies like I feel about true crime. Maybe people think I'm creepy too. Anyway, but I just love my job. I think maybe he just loved his job. He's like, and then we saw it. And I was like, what did you see? He was like, a little necklace. And so we took a picture of it. And then we found pictures of Tylee wearing that same necklace. And we were like, oh, jackpot. We have the right spot. And so then we got all these little tools. And one by one, grain of dirt by grain of dirt, we went through. And it took us a couple of days. And we were very, very excited. And he was like, then after several hours of digging, we made a discovery and I was just like, okay, what was the discovery? I'm on the edge of my seat because he's excited. So I'm excited and you know, I'm easily excitable. He was just like, we found a vertebra. And I was like, ew. And he was just like, I know, right? And I was like, sir, sir, I think we're experiencing two different emotions here. And then the judge was like, okay, um, everybody in the audience, we're gonna need you to avert your eyes so that you're not in therapy for the next 100,000 years. So everybody stand up, take a stretch break, and all the regular people sit over here on this side so you really can't see the pictures. And all the poor jurors sit over there because now we're gonna traumatize you. We're so sorry, but we're gonna pay you $12 a day and possibly for your parking. And you will get a sandwich with um, extra mayonnaise and possibly bacon. And so, um, <clears throat> Oh, that little amphibian. Hang on. So he was like, we found the necklace and we took a picture and then we found a found a picture of Tylee wearing this necklace and we were like, okay. And so we were little by little, grain at a time, digging through the dirt and we started to find body pieces and then we smelled it. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. What, roses, flowers, natural earth. He was like, the scent of decomposition. And I was like, um, sir, from what I recall, the regular police were like, I'll never forget it. It was so terrible. Oh my God, I still have nightmares about that smell. This dude, he loved that smell. He was super, super excited. He was like, once we smelled decomp, we knew we were on to something. Less excitement, sir. Bring it down a little bit. He's like, and then we found this piece and that piece and this piece. And then we once we found like what we thought was a whole skeleton, then we found a, mel a melted green bucket. Hmm? A melted green bucket. Okay. Uh, because apparently they, um, this is not for the weak of spirit, child. And you know, I am a delicate flower. But they were like, we found some, a melted bucket where they have burned poor Tyler. Oh my God, it was horrible. He's like, and we tried to pick it up and it fell to a million pieces. And then we put it in the body bag. And then we just took it off to the coroner's office and we needed to examine it or whatever. And I was like, this is terrible. He's like, uh huh, it really, really is. And I was like, sir a little solemnity. I can see we're over there at the digging up dead body school. They taught you like, this is how you dig up a dead body. Here's all the things you need. You get to shake like you're panning for gold. You can move um, dirt one grain at a time. A little reverence. You're gonna need a little more reverence. And so then they gathered up all the, the all the body parts. And then he was like, then we put the dirt back and whatever. Cause you know, you wanna leave it nice. You wanna clean up your work area, apparently. He's like, and then we looked to the barn and we went over in the barn and we saw a man door. And I was like, a man door? What is a man door? Apparently a man door is like, if you have a big, like a garage door where cars could go in or farm equipment, and then there's a regular size door, it's called a man door. Well, look, I just learned something new in my true crime watcher. So he's like, so we went through the man door and we saw all these tools that were dirty. And I was like, right, cause they're tools. Our tools usually, do you clean off your, I don't clean off my tool. I just use it and then put them back. Anyway, he was just like, so we collected them because we weren't sure what was on them. And here's the thing that was striking to me about this. Didn't the psychic Serafina Donna, Donna Serafina, one of those is her real name. That psychic said that there were tools that were on a workbench inside of like a little red barn or whatever that were used to disassemble Tylee. Also, they cooked her. And according to the psychic, 
they ate her. Now listen, this has not come out in court. It is not likely to come out in court. I don't think there's any proof of it or whatever. But according to that psychic, and please keep in mind, four months before, before Tylee and JJ were found, the psychic talked about all of this, where the body will be found, what the building looked like, the body of water that was nearby, the tools that were used, the burning of the body. Now listen, they talked about Chad going on his computer and Googling like, oh, what is the wind direction? Because they were going to make a fire. And the police made it sound like they made a fire to burn, to like get, to try and get rid of her body. But according to the psychic, sandwiches. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Don't believe me? Go check out the YouTube channel of the Reverend Donna Serafina, Serafina Donna. One of those is her real name. Just Google them both because you know I'll remember which one is the right one. And according to her, they took Ty uh, from Tylee's body. They ate her. I, y'all, I was not ready. I was not ready. Oh, but then the day ended, the trial day ended, and I kind of needed it to be over because it was too much because they were talking about, oh, yeah, we found a melted this and a melted that. My headphones just went off. It's it said, probably because I need to charge them. But child, you know, that's not going to stop me. Anyway, um, the trial day wrapped up. And it was a lot. But today, we're back in trial today. Trial day 17 of the state of Idaho to Wyoming versus Chad Daybell. Now, look, one quick thing, if you're still here. Somebody won a bingo prize. Now, you know you could go play bingo on this channel, right? Um, And Laura, what's her name? Laura Vanderbilt. Um, won a bingo prize and she gave me her P.O. box, but it came back to me saying that that P.O. box was vacant. So, Laura, girl, I cannot find your address that you originally sent to me. So, um, if you would just send me your address again, I will send your bingo prize out to you. And if you have not played bingo, child, get down in the, in the, um, the more section in the description of this video. You can find out about the podcast of this show. You can find out about how to play bingo. You can... All kinds of delightful stuff is there. Look, I got to go take a shower. I got to get myself ready. You have a fantastic day and I will see you later. Bye.